Hello, Calculus 2. We're in Chapter 6, Learning Differential Equations. When we get to 6.3, uh, we finally do separation of variables. Well, get it? We've been doing separation of variables. That's what we've been doing to solve a differential equation. We separate and integrate. So I taught you this already. Let's look at a few things pop up here, though, in 6.3, uh, and then we'll move to 6.4 next video. But so here's a differential equation, and you can solve it if you separate and integrate. This one, this one gets some students sometimes. They're not sure what to do. So, you know, the separate part is very algebraic. I would move everybody over to that side. Um, <clears throat> I would rewrite the, D, the y prime as a dy dx. So there's a 2 dy dx. That's just me re rewriting the y prime. Uh, moving these terms to the other side, I get a positive 5x and a negative 4xy. And some students don't quite know how to separate this. The key is factoring. That's all. A simple little factoring, and then you can get it separated. Um, so on that <coughs> side over there, that right-hand side, I would factor out an x. That would give me 5 minus 4y. I did that right. Uh, this is 2 dy dx. And I'm going to separate and integrate. Uh, let's see. I want to take the dx and multiply it over here. I want to take that quantity, 5 minus 4y, and divide it here. I'll leave the 2 on top. 5 minus 4y, and this equals x dx. Okay. Yeah, good. So that took a little work, and the key was factoring. But that little bit of work uh, let it... Uh, <clears throat> uh, let it, uh, that was algebra, and I got it separated. Now I'll integrate both sides. I'll integrate this side with respect to y. I'll integrate this side with respect to x. This is really easy. This is x squared over 2, of course, plus c. And on this side, technically, it's a little u substitution. I'm not sure if you're ready to do this in your head or not. And I'll just help you here. Uh, I would let u equal the denominator. du is a negative 4 dy. I like to move the negative 4 over, call it negative 1 fourth du equals dy. Therefore, when I rewrite this integral, the 2 comes out. And when I replace the dy, I replace the dy with negative 1 fourth du. Negative 1 fourth du, and the denominator is a u. And so now I'm ready to integrate. That's a negative 1 half natural log of u. Uh, by the way, it's the natural log of u, and u is this 5 minus 4y. So, I took a little u substitution, natural log integral, actually, and we're finished. This equals x squared over 2 plus c, and we have solved the differential equation. There was no initial value. Uh, we separated it and integrated. Um, again, <clears throat> I would call this an implicit general solution. If there was an initial value, I could find C. And uh, maybe they want an explicit solution, which means they want me to solve for Y. And you know, that takes a little bit of work. We've been doing that. Um, uh, perhaps I should do that. I'm going to get rid of this, though. In order to integrate, <clears throat> in order to solve for Y, I need a little more room. Uh, what would you do? Multiply by negative 2, multiply by negative 2. So the natural log of 5 minus 4y uh, equals uh, negative x squared plus c. And then what? E both sides. You could E both sides. That's when I drop the absolute value. 5 minus 4y equals, if you remember, this is e to the negative x squared times e to the c which I call c, e to the negative x squared, a multiplied c. What was a plus c got turned into a multiplied c. I like that move. That's an important move. Hopefully you understand it. Um, solve for y, I guess I would subtract 5 and divide by negative 4. Um, so I have this c, e to the negative x squared. What did I say? Subtract a 5. And then I'm going to divide by negative 4. You know, when you take this C and divide by negative 4, you can just let it absorb into the C. So I have, still have some different C when I divide by negative 4. When I divide him by negative 4, of course, it's a positive 5 fourths. So there you go. There's an explicit general solution. There's my implicit general solution. Um, okay. Here, I want to do another one from the book here. Uh, I found this problem number 22 in the book. 
I'm in 6.3, it looks like this, so a new problem. I also wanted to tell you about the Gompertz equation. Uh, we'll get there in a minute. So first, this is number 22 out of the text, section 6.3. It's y square root of 1 minus x squared y prime um, <clears throat> minus x square root of 1 minus y squared equals 0. There is an initial condition y of one-half equals one-half. <clears throat> that says when x is one-half, the y value is one-half. It's like function notation. All right, I'm going to get rid of this previous problem. So this one looks pretty good, you know. You know, I don't know. I like math. I love math. So I'm not intimidated. I'm up for the challenge. Hopefully you are too. you got to love this stuff. Um, you know, so what helps me get started is probably move somebody to the other side. Make sure I change that to a dy dx. So I'm going to do that. I'm changing that to a dy dx. Moving this guy to the other side, it's an x times a square root. And now I think you can, you know, multiplying and dividing kind of is what uh, separates these a lot of times after I added it to the other side. Let's see. Yeah, so I want the x's over there, so that x is going to stay there. This dx is going to come over here, and this guy is going to get put into the denominator, square root of 1 minus x squared. Over here, I've got a y and a dy, and then I divide by this square root of 1 minus y squared, so here I am. So I did several little algebra steps there, but I am separated. And now I'd like to integrate this side with respect to y and integrate this side with respect to x. Maybe you notice they're the same integral. It's the same integral. So all I've got to do is one of them with respect to x. This other one's the same answer. Uh, and I know how to do these integrals. I've got to do u substitution again. <clears throat> hey, I want to make a little comment. During the separation part of these problems, you know, you always, you always get dy and dx up in the numerator. You never, you never should end up with a dx in the denominator. Or you've never integrated anything like that, and you can't. The dx is in the numerator or off to the side. That's how you want to separate them. Uh, it's possible to do your algebra reciprocated, and therefore you could get all these upside down, and that wouldn't work. It doesn't, you, can't, you can't integrate with a dx in the denominator. It's off to the side or in the numerator. That's how you always set these up. <clears throat> All right, so a little u substitution problem. You let u equal the denominator, or what's in the square root, sorry. Uh, du is a negative 2x dx. I'm happy about the x dx. I move the negative 2 over here. What happens to this problem is it's a negative 1 half and out front from the du. The numerator is a du, <clears throat> and the denominator is a square root of u. And that's a power rule. That's not a log. That is not a log. That's a power rule. You move it up and do a power rule. That is u to the negative one-half. I haven't done the power rule yet. I will now. That is a positive, let's see, you add one to it, u to the one-half. Uh, divide by one-half, which means multiply by two. That cancels that two, leaves me a negative sign, plus c. So the answer is... <clears throat> Uh, the negative square root of whatever that u was, 1 minus x squared plus c. Um, well, this is the same problem with y's. So the answer is the negative square root of 1 minus y squared plus c. But we don't put a plus c on this side. I just lump it together. Well, there we are. That's not bad. Um, <clears throat> you know, if I... Uh, if I plug in this initial condition, I can find C. Now, I could wait. I could try to solve for Y. That doesn't look too fun. I don't think I want to try to solve for Y. So I could, though, wait till this is explicit and then plug this initial condition in and find that, that C. Or I can plug it in right now and find this C. I think I'm going to go for this right now. If X is a half, Y is a half. Um, okay, I might need a little room here. Sorry. Still haven't done Gompertz. Uh, let me come up here where I got a little room. Moving up here where I got a little room. When I plug in a half, that's negative square root of 1 minus 
one half squared is one fourth, one minus, a, that's the square root of three fourths. That equals the other side, which when I plug in a half is a one fourth one, that's the square root of three fourths plus C. Well, if I add this to this side, that's a zero, C is zero. So this is the answer. Let's rewrite it here. And C is a zero. So it's the negative square root of one minus Y squared equals negative square root of one minus X squared. Now watch this. What if you squared both sides? I think when you square both sides, you'd get rid of the negative sign. You'd have one minus Y squared equals, and the square root, and one minus X squared. What if you subtracted one from both sides? And then you got negative Y squared equals negative X squared. What if you multiplied both sides by a negative? Y squared equals X squared. What if you took the square root of both sides? Y would equal plus or minus X. Is that the answer? That might be, that might be an explicit version of the answer. Y equals X, or Y equals plus or minus X. I guess if X was positive or negative, it would work. So, that's a funny problem. Sorry, I love all that algebra. <clears throat> Let's try to solve this Gompertz equation. Uh, this is another example. They put me, they put this, this shows up in 6.3, but it's another example of, of population growth. Uh, but it's a little different. It, it, this population does not just grow uh, unlimitedly, it, it grows toward a limit, and that limit is L. And they call that sort of the carrying capacity of the environment. So the population does not have unlimited growth. The population approaches this L. Uh, you can see that when you graph the solution to that differential equation. I thought it was kind of fun to try to solve this differential equation. It's kind of a challenge. Um, <clears throat> And like I said, it's used in a lot of population growth problems. I read where it's used in some tumor growth problems, some economics problems, uh, some insurance, life insurance uh, problems. I think that's where this Gompertz uh, derived this thing. So um, anyway, let's see. Boy, that looks pretty tough. Uh, let's see. The K is a constant. The L is a constant. The variable is Y and T. Uh, I guess I need, oh uh, boy, oh boy, I need, I need to get the Y and the LN of L over Y. I need to divide by those and put them down here underneath the DY and multiply this K over, this K is already there, multiply the DT to the other side. Well, there I am. I divided by those Y terms, and I multiplied by the DT, and it's separated. Uh, I think I'll try to integrate right now. And here comes, well, it's easy over here. Can anybody integrate a K with respect to T? K is a constant. You get KT plus C. We've done that a couple times. And then this is the challenge. Try to get that integral done is the challenge. I'm going to erase this guy. <clears throat> I think it works like this. I tried it. Yeah, you could do a couple things. I thought about separating that ln or using some properties of logs, but let's just let u equal the natural log of l over y. We'll treat l like a constant. Uh, what do I do? I need the derivative, du. I need the derivative. The derivative of ln is 1 over this. 1 over this is the reciprocal of this. So 1 over L over Y is Y over L times the derivative of the L over Y. You know, you treat that as L Y to the negative 1, and you got to do that derivative. That's the chain rule. That's a negative L Y to the negative 2. The derivative of this is this, negative little power rule, negative L Y to the negative 2. You could go, those L's cancel. One of those y's cancels. This is a dy, by the way. I get a negative 1 over y dy. That's my du. Man, that's pretty cool. That's what's sitting here. This is a 1 over y dy. When I rewrite this, that's my u. And what's this 1 over y dy? 1 over y dy is my du with a negative sign out front. That's awesome. So how do you integrate 1 over u du? That's the ln of u with a negative sign out front. That's the negative ln of u. 
And what's u? By I mean, I need my absolute value. The negative ln of u, and what's u? What's u? What's u? Oh, it's an ln. The ln of l over y. Wow. So there's the answer. The negative the l, the negative log of the log, <laughs> the negative ln of the ln of l over y equals kt plus c. And now, do you want to solve for y? Video's getting long, but we should solve for y. What would you do to solve? I would multiply by a negative sign. So the ln of the ln of l over y equals negative kt plus c. Remember, the c can just, that, that's a new c now. That's a new arbitrary c. It absorbed the negative sign. Uh, what do you do to get rid of this ln? You e both sides. So when I e this side, it cancels. I'm left with this ln. The ln of l over y equals e to the, this side. And we've done that a few times now. That's going to be a multiplied c e to the negative kt. This is awesome. Now what? How do you solve for uh, uh, e both sides again? e both sides again. E and log cancel each other out. L over Y equals E to the C, E to the negative KT. So it's an E function raised to an E function. Wow. Um, to multiply, to solve for Y, I think I would multiply the Y here and sort of divide by that dude, <clears throat> which means the Y is going to equal L, E to the negative C, E to the negative K over T. Uh, you might, I might have lost you on that last step. I multiplied by the y and I divided by this e function. If this e function is sitting underneath this l, I can move it up and call it e to the negative c. So I did. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> if I, there's some good word problems in the book. There's a, a population uh, that has a carrying capacity of 600. L would be 600. You could do this problem with 600. But, but see, now we have the model. We have the Gompertz model that comes from this differential equation. Um, <clears throat> if you had a couple initial conditions, you could find C and K. If you had a couple of pieces of data, you find C and K. You got this E function raised to this other E function. It's hard to just type it in your calculator. If you do, you get this kind of graph, though. I'm ready to show you the graph. <clears throat> So this is it in general, but you get one of these, uh, it approaches, it's not unlimited, it's not unlimited population growth, it is approaching this carrying capacity, L. So this L acts like a horizontal asymptote, and we get this kind of logistic shape. We're going to study another curve called the logistic curve that's a, that's a variation of this. So this is a variation of the logistic curve that has this look. <clears throat> That's a different differential equation, very similar, very similar look, uh, different looking equation. But. All right, thanks for listening to all that stuff, man. That's a lot of beautiful math. I'm glad you love math. Uh, keep it up. Thank you.